I use this example a lot, but I was it was a uh, one weekend I was on Facebook and uh, an ad came up on Facebook in the stream that said Dave Chappelle has just opened up a new show on Sunday, last chance get your tickets, and I love Dave Chappelle. I clicked it within seconds and it was you know amazing. Me and my buddy went the next day. So as a consumer or as somebody that was targeted, I was happy that I was targeted. Yeah. How do you ensure, because spam is obviously something everybody hates and mm -hmm. everybody dreads and people have spam filters and they don't want to be hit ever, it seems like. Um, how do you ensure that the stuff that is getting the people they're actually either enjoying or appreciating, like, I actually, you actually fit the right person in this campaign? It, it's by making sure that every email you send out, so the database that we work with, um, ev we guarantee that everybody in there is completely 100% opt-in. They have opted in to receive an email from uh, a subscriber that they signed up with mm -hmm. or their carefully selected third party partners. Is there a system, because if I subscribe to Golf Digest, I might want to see a sale on Callaway Golf Clubs. Yeah. But I don't want to see it every day. Mm -hmm. um, within your, your analytics or data, uh, are you able to make sure you're not hitting people too much with we, the same list? We are. We also maintain a huge unsubscribe list um, of, of uh, contacts that don't want to receive an email. Um, we're not gonna, we're gonna make sure that they never get an email like that, you know. Um, and the, the entire data across all these 60 countries, it's all uh, can spam compliant mm -hmm. and also <coughs> follows the spam laws of that particular the law of the land. Can you describe uh, the greatest challenge from my perspective in a business like yours would be compliance? Because some of these, I know especially in the United States like the can spam, there's some gray areas, or at least industries claim that there are gray areas to try to <laughs> fudge the lines, but you're in how many countries? 60. And so I, I assume there's some overarching policies that cover more than one country, but how, how does that look like in your company when you're trying to develop specific compliance per area, especially when some of your clients may be looking to do certain global pushes or a collection of countries? Yeah, that's a great question. We have a couple of people that are employed just that work just on compliance, that attend events um, uh, globally on you know data compliance. You know what does it mean um, in terms of compliance of how to do marketing within um, within a country like France, or you want to do marketing in China or Japan. Um, what should a campaign look like when you're sending email blasts in Japanese? Yeah, you know you, you won't get. Um, good results, you know, if you're sending an email campaign in Japan or China in English, you know, yeah. you, you have to make sure you have to have a native speaker who's going to review the creative that's going out. Um, so coming back to compliance, um, U.S. has its own laws that is can spam. Um, Canada is actually has, has put in um, a law called CASL um, that is even more stricter in terms of compliance than U.S. Um, so we, we have guidelines that we follow for each country um, and the specialists that work on that, um, on compliance issues for each country, they work with our data compliance team directly. They guide them on what is considered um, <coughs> compliant and non-compliant. Um, we, we have to self-certify ourselves. We don't have to, we do, um, to this, um, institution called uh, Privacy Shield. It's, uh, it, it means that um, you are complying to global data compliance laws. Um, and we are a member of that. 